Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala syafil anbiya wal mursalin Amma ba'ad Honorable guardians My guests and My dear students It's wonderful to see you in this meeting Welcome to see our Sarah session With the kids Today Our discuss, discussion topic is the childhood of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, okay, let's start. Today I divided, I divided this topic in various topics or paragraphs. The first one is at the cradle of foster mother Halima. That means our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had varieties, chapters in his childhood. That's why I divided this session in varieties, also chapters. Okay, first one is at the cradle of foster mother Halima. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the son of Abdullah and Amina. We know that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's father name is Abdullah and mother name is Amina. His father Abdullah passed away a few days before his birth. That, that means he never seen, never seen his dad. He was born on Monday morning. Famous view is on 12 Rabiul Awal in the city of Mecca in Arabia in 500 in, a, in one view is 570 and another view is 571 current era. His forefather was or the ships of the tribe of Quraysh. It was customary among the noble families of Quraysh that they entrusted their newborns uh, to country women so that they might be brought up in the open and healthy environments. According to this custom, therefore, the mother of the Holy Prophet gave him into the care of Halima Sadia, a lady, belong, a lady belonging to the tribe of Banu Sa'ad. And the second chapter is losing mother and grandfather. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent the first five years of his life with Halima and then she returned him to his mother Amina. His mother brought him up with great love and devotion when he was about six years old. She took him to Medina for a few days. On her return journey, however, she breathed her last on the way. After this, his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, took him into his care. Abdul Muttalib loved his orphaned grandchild very much and was very kind to him. However, he too expired after two years. That means he lost his mother at his six, eight years and he lost his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, when he was eight, only eight. And the next one, at home of Abu Talib. Now the Holy Prophet began to live with his uncle Abu Talib, Fatima, daughter of Asad, who was the wife of Abu Talib, loved. That means Fatima, she was uh, auntie of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that means the wife of Abu Talib. Loved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as if he were her own son. Abu Talib too was very good to him when he undertook a journey for the purpose of trade, he took his young nephew along with him. Renowned as a Swadik and Al Amin. A Swadik means the truthful, Al Amin means the trustworthy. As Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam acquired under the guidance of his un uncle, for knowledge and experience of business and as well spoken 
of by persons who happened to come into touch with him. Some traders engaged him as their representative to conduct important business affairs on their behalf. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so successfully executed this, these trusts that people were perfectly satisfied with his honesty. The people therefore respected him very much and used to call him Sadiq, what I, we, we named as the title of this chapter, as Sadiq, the truthful and Al-Amin, the trustworthy. From his early childhood, he never took part in idolatrous rituals and never told a lie. He had excellent habits and an, and an impeachable character. Honesty and truthfulness command respect and honor. An amazing story in Prophet's childhood. Hazrat Jabir bin Abdullah, that bin Jabir, who was the son of Abdullah, reported the messenger of Allah, that bin Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was carrying along with them, his people, stones for the Kaaba. And there was a waist wrapper around him. His uncle Abbas, Abbas radiallahu was his uncle, the uh, brother of his father, said to him, O oh son, O oh my brother, O oh son of my brother, if you take off the lower garment and place it on the shoulders underneath the stones, it would be better. He, that means the Holy Prophet took it off and placed it on his shoulder and fell down unconscious. He, the narrator said, never was he seen naked after that day. That was, this one is narrated in Sahih Muslim, uh, Hadith Nong 340. That means we learned that only he was naked when he was set a childhood during reforming the Kaaba and during a carrying stone for reforming the Kaaba, Holy Kaaba. Number next stone. Moral of the story. This one is very, very important for us. It's sorry to say some bodies of us wear short pants, what doesn't cover the private area, what is haram, illegal to show other. We learned that we just, we read that our prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never saw her, his naked or private area to other all, uh, else ones when he was reforming Kaaba, but that was also his childhood, in his childhood. Okay, anyway, so here illegal, I mean the private area is, uh, I have to mention that for male, the, from the center point of the belly, I mean navel, uh, from the navel to knees, this uh, only the point is the area of the body is uh, private area for male and for female whole body else is um, face and uh, both hands, only hands, uh, and then the both legs below the ankles. Okay. Then number two, but we could see that our prophet was never seen naked else once. And number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, children of Adam, that means O oh, Bani Adam, uh, we have provided for you clothing to cover your nakedness as and as an adornment. However, the best clothing is righteousness. This is one of Allah's bounties. So perhaps you will be mindful. Seven number Surah Al-Araf, verse number 26. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about his childhood. These are the verses of Holy Quran of Surah Al-Duha. Did he not find you as an orphan then sheltered you? Did he not find you unguided, then guided you? And did he not find you needy, then satisfied your needs? So do not oppress the orphan. 
not repulse the beggar and proclaim the blessing of your Lord. Surah Ad-Duha, verse number six to 11. End of the day, this is the conclusion of our session. End of the day, indeed, we belong to Allah. Inna lillah. And indeed, to him, we will return. Wa inna ilayhi rajiun. That means we have to come back to Allah's role. And whatever the messenger has given, you take and what he has forbidden you, refrain from and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is severed in penalty or in punishment. This is also the verse of the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Hashar, verse number seven. That means end of the session we are invite you to come back in Allah's order. And also we have to follow the messenger's messages, what he's, what he's given us. So all the best to you. Thank you very much to all of you who joined in this session. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.